Translate and rotate are two functions that are commonly used to change the position and rotation of a game object. In this example, we begin by looking at translate. You can see that the argument of translate takes a vector 3. This example simply translates down the z-axis. So you can see we've used 0 for x and y. It's going to move by 1 every frame because it's inside update. Let's see how that works. The script is applied to our SkateBot object. You can see that if I press play, it moves very quickly because it's updating every frame. Now, what we'd normally do with a translate operation is to multiply it by time dot delta time. This means that it will be moved in meters per second rather than meters per frame. Then, instead of saying vector 3001, we can use vector 3.forward as a shortcut to this. And we can then multiply by another value, which we can establish as a separate variable. That way, we can control it by adjusting the variable inside the inspector. But what if we don't want this to happen every frame, and we want it to be based, for example, on a key press, meaning that it only occurs when I press the up arrow? Then I could do the exact same checking for the down arrow. This time, I've used a negative value for vector 3.forward in order to move backwards when I press down. Let's look at transform.rotate. It works in a very similar way, again taking in a vector 3 for its argument. This time, we're using the vector 3 shortcut, vector 3.up. This represents the axis around which to turn. This is the first argument, and the amount to turn by is the second argument. Now, we'll add in our variable called turn speed, and when I press play, I can move the object around and rotate it using the left and right arrows. And again, because I've set these as public variables, I can adjust them without having to go back to edit the scripts. It should be noted that these functions work on the local axis rather than in the world axis. So where I'm using vector3.forward or vector3.up, this is relative to the axis of the game object that it's applied to. It's also worth noting that if you want to move an object with a collider, something that's going to be interacting with physics, then you may not want to use translate or rotate, and you should look at using the physics functions instead. We'll look at those in a separate lesson.